Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Uh, today I'm here with Tim Anderson, Master Chef winner and ramen nerd. Uh, today, what are you cooking up for us? I'm gonna make a Japanese comfort food classic, pork katsu curry rice. We're going to be using a lovely beer uh, in that curry sauce, because, you know, I like to hear. why not? It's the Craft Beer Channel. All right. That's why. And it's yeah. a craft beer, <laughs> I, I think. I don't know. I think it's craft. Who knows what craft is? It has a monk on it. That, that's pretty much the sign of craft. This is a Bavarian vice beer, it's a wheat beer, um, and there's always a fruit element or a sweet element in Japanese curries. Usually it's grated apple, uh, in some cases mashed banana or pineapple uh, or honey. And this has a nice sweetness to it, and also because of the yeast they use, it's got a, uh, a nice banana flavor to it, almost mm -hmm. like a banana bread thing. And little hints of spice as well, there's a clove note from that yeast as well. We are going to start with our veg for the curry. Because this dish is nothing if not healthy and balanced. Top and tail your onion. And we want to cut it into wedges. Sort of into eighths, I reckon should do the trick. We want floury potatoes here. Not super floury, not like a mashing potato, but uh, you know, Maris Piper would be very good here. We want this into sort of, not bite-sized pieces, but sort of two bite-sized pieces, like so. And now, Slide that aside. We got two carrots. Um, I'm gonna show you the Japanese knife technique here. It's nothing special really, but it's called, I like the name of it. It's called langiri, which means chaos cut. And basically what you wanna do is cut it into irregular wedges. So every, you, you cut on the bias, and then every time you cut, you rotate the carrot a quarter of a turn around. So you're getting pieces that are equal in size, but different in shape. A pan with fire underneath it. Sort of a medium high heat. A little bit of oil in there. Once the oil's hot, we're gonna take our onion wedges, chop them in there. Let them just get a nice sort of golden brown color, then soften and stew a bit. Right, these onions are lovely and brown, smelling like a hot dog stand at 2 a.m which is good, by the way. And now we're just gonna add our liquid. So, we've got some good quality chicken stock here. But really, you can use um, whatever stock you have, whatever stock you like. A Japanese dashi would be fine. A vegetable stock, a mushroom stock, a beef stock, a donkey stock. I don't know what you have at home. But anyway, about 500 mil of that, and then of course, our beer. This is uh, our lovely vice beer with those banana and clove flavors. And we'll go about 300 ml of that and add a little bit of soy sauce. That should do it. We're going to add our veg, so potatoes. There we go. And carrots. Well, now, Jap Japanese curries, they're kind of weird. They're uh, Indian curries by way of the British military. Um, so they're sort of far removed from what you might consider an authentic, real South Asian curry. That doesn't mean they're not delicious, but what they are essentially are is, is, a, is a white sauce or a bechamel uh, of, of a sort that starts with a butter and flour roux with some spices checked in. So if you try to serve this to your Indian mother-in-law or something like this, they'll probably say, what's wrong with you? All right, so we want to get a little bit of color on this roux and it should start to smell Sort of toasty nutty, that's the flour. Gently toasting. Once it's like that, we'll add our curry powder. So add a couple tablespoons of that in there. And stir it up. Ginger, garlic, butter, mmm. So we've got our curry roux here, with all that butter and flour in there. We're just gonna dump it in. And that starch is gonna thicken our sauce. Like magic, people. So this is my panang station. The best way to do this without getting too messy is to have one dry hand and one wet hand. So use one hand to do the flour and the panko and one hand to do the eggs. We lay our lovely cutlet in the flour first. Then the egg, other hand. Make sure it's nice and evenly coated. When you're mixing egg and flour like this, what you're essentially doing is making a glue that the panko will stick 
to. Again, dry hand. And pack it down in there. Hot oil, tongs, breaded pork. Let's do this. Lay your pork in the oil. We want to cook them for about eh, three, four minutes on each side maximum. God, that's a good sound. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And all that's left to do now is plate up. And finally, something special, something pink. This is red pickled ginger, similar to your sushi pickled ginger, but a little less sweet. And uh, the acidity and the brightness that you get from it, it just really it works really, really well. To sort of perk up this rich curry and fatty pork. And there you are. Pork, katsu, curry, with beer. I've got your beer. Thank God. This looks amazing. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. That looks amazing. That's one of my favorite breweries. So this is Hitachino. Uh, that was a terrible accent for a Japanese. It sounded one. weirdly Mexican. Mexican. Or Italian. Hitachino. Hitachino. <laughs> um, yeah, the brewery is called Kiuchi. They started off brewing sake. So if they make sake, what I'm hoping for is a really clean, really well-made beer. Mm. Is, that, is that what I'm gonna get? I'll tell you what, they do, they're very, very balanced. All their beers are sort of Really, everything is neatly tied together. This is their pale ale, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so this one, it's got a little bit of that sort of citrusy hop thing that you'd expect from an American style pale ale. But it's a bit more restrained, which I think is gonna work perfectly with this. Because this is actually, it's, it's a fairly mild and sweet and comforting brown dish, yeah. you know? Kanpai. 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 Mm. And it's top stuff. It's kind of toppy, but it's very, very clean. It's not it's sticky. It's dry. Concept, yeah. It's like a dry sweetness. Mm. I don't know how they do it. Um, so, uh, I'm out going for one of those potatoes. Mm. I can eat a potato. And actually, these work really well together, I think. They just, they've got a similar sort of flavor profile. But there's even a little bit of spice to the beer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they totally blend together. It's like a really good beer match can be like it's almost another ingredient you just add it to the dish. Exactly. Well, thank you for coming and cooking that up. Thank you for having um, me. Thank you for the beer. No, no problem. Mm. I think it's the start of a beautiful friendship. Thank you very much. I'm going to dig into the rest of it. You'll have to fight me for it. <laughs>